in this section we'll be taking a look at ellipses. So first you'll notice that an ellipse has a center, h comma k, um, whether or not it's a horizontal or a vertical ellipse. Um, you'll see that for a horizontal ellipse the major axis is a horizontal line. For a vertical ellipse the major axis is a vertical line. Um, the major axis will go through the center and the foci, which is the, the plural of focus, and the vertices. So that is the point of the major axis. Um, some books describe a minor axis, which goes through the center um, perpendicular to the major axis. Uh, this book doesn't emphasize that. Um, this A value here that you see in both equations, the A value is the distance from the center to a vertex. Okay, so I'm illustrating that right now in the vertical ellipse. Um, the B value that you see here is always smaller than A. Oops, B is less than A. And it's the distance from the center to the, uh, on the minor axis, which is called the co-vertex. Okay, so that can help you to draw your um, ellipse more accurately. Um, the last thing is a C value. The C value comes from this relationship, B squared equals A squared minus C squared. The C value is the distance from the center to uh, one of the foci. So each focus is a distance of C away from the center. Um, the, the main way you can tell from an equation if the ellipse is horizontal or vertical is to notice which fraction has the larger denominator. Um, if the x fraction has the larger denominator, the ellipse is horizontal. If the y fraction has a larger denominator, the ellipse is vertical. So let's try an example here. Find the equation for the ellipse and graph. So it's telling us the foci are at 1, 2 and negative 3, 2 and the vertex is at negative 4, 2. Okay. So um, remember there are two vertices, and if they gave us one, we should be able to find the other one. Let's go ahead and plot these points and see if we can uh, kind of start to visualize what the ellipse looks like. So we have a foci at 1, 2, and negative 3, 2. Okay, so we have two foci here. Um, just from having these, we can already tell where the center is. The center should be directly between the foci. These are both, uh, these are four units apart. So center will be two units from both of them. So I can already get the center just from already just plotting those two points. So the center looks like it's the point negative one comma two. And this gives us the C value as well. The C is the distance between the center and, and a focus. That is two. Okay, now let's look at the vertices. It gave us one vertex at negative four, two. So here's one vertex. Um, the vertex you can see is one unit away from this fo fo focus here. So the other vertex will be one unit away from the other focus. Uh, luckily, ellipses are highly symmetric. So we can tell that the other vertex has coordinates two comma two. Okay, so we can see the distance from the center to a vertex is one, two, three units. So our A value is 3, and um, just from this picture you can see that the major axis is horizontal, which means we're looking at a horizontal ellipse. So let's write out the standard form of a horizontal ellipse. It is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So we have h and k already, the center. We have A, A is 3. The only thing that we are missing is B. We can use this relationship here, B squared equals A squared minus C squared, to find the value of B. So I have B squared equals A squared minus C squared, so B squared equals 3 squared minus 2 squared. So B squared equals 9 minus 4. So b squared is 5. Um, that means b itself is the square root of 5, which is about 2.2. The only reason I'm approximating it is so I can more accurately draw my ellipse. 
If the B value is 2.2, I know that covertex is a little bit more than two units away from the center above and below. So this helps me to draw a better looking ellipse. So I can kind of sketch that in now, look something like that. All right, now let's go ahead and fill in our equation of our ellipse with all the information that we found. So we have um, x minus h squared, which would be x plus one squared over a squared, which is nine, plus y minus two squared over b squared, b squared is five. And that is equal to one. So this would be the equation of the ellipse. Let's try another one with slightly different information given. Center at one comma two, focus at one comma four, and contains the point two comma two. So this is slightly different information. So let's graph it and see if we can figure out which standard form we should use. Okay, so the center is at the point one comma two. So let's label it. We have a focus at one comma four. Okay, if I have a focus there, I know there's gonna be a focus down here, also two units away from the center, right? Because the because of the symmetry of the um, ellipse, this means that our C value would have to be equal to two. So remember, C is the distance from a center to a focus. It also says contains the point two comma two. So looking at that point, that is a covertex. This tells us that our B value is equal to one, okay? So what we can now do is we can try to put this information together to find the value of A. I can tell this is a vertical ellipse because the major axis is vertical. That means we're going to use this standard form of the equation of the ellipse, Oops, x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals one. So the a squared is the larger number that's now going in the denominator of the fraction with the y terms because it's a vertical ellipse. Now we're gonna use the b and c values to solve for a. So b squared equals a squared minus c squared. So one equals a squared minus two squared. So one equals a squared minus four. So five equals a squared. The square root of five equals a, so a is approximately 2.2. And once again, I'm getting that approximation so that I can more accurately draw my um, ellipse. So in this case, the vertices and the foci are very close together. The foci, uh, the foci are at two units away from the center. The vertices are at 2.2 units away. So this is a kind of a small ellipse here. So something, oops, not, oops, not a straight line, something like this. Okay, and lastly, let's put this together to write out the equation. So um, I have h and k right here. The center was given. So x minus 1 squared over um, b squared would be 1 plus y minus 2 squared over a squared was 5 equals 1. Um, you don't necessarily have to write over 1. Um, if you don't like the way that looks, you can just write it as x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared over 5 equals 1. It's the same thing. It looks a little bit uh, more cleaned up. Okay, another different type of example. Um, looks kind of like it's off-center somehow. So I think that this negative 3 comma 1 is referring to the center here. Okay, so this is find an equation for the ellipse shown. Um, first of all, uh, we have the coordinates of the center, so we have h and k. Um, all we need to figure out are the a and b values. So the a value is the distance from a center to a vertex. So from this center to this vertex is uh, going from a y value of 1 to a y value of 5. So a equals 4. Then the B value is the distance from the center to the covertex. So this is a change from an X value of negative three to an X value of negative four. So B would be one. So now we have H and K, we have A and B. So we can put that together into the equation of the ellipse. So that would be X plus three squared over 
b squared, which is 1, plus y minus 1 squared over a squared, which is 4, so 16 equals 1. And then once again, you don't have to write 1 in the denominator if you don't want to. You can just write x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared over 16 equals 1. Here we have the equation of an ellipse, but it is not in standard form. So what you have to do here is a little bit similar to what we did for a circle. You will have to complete the square for x and y. And then um, you will have to make sure that you get 1 on one side. So complete the square for x and y. And then we'll make sure that the equation ends up in standard form. So let's go ahead and write the x terms together and the y terms together. And then any constant terms will move to the other side. So we'll add 5 to the other side of the equation. So let's group our x terms together. 4x squared plus 8x. Then group our y terms together plus 3y squared minus 6y, and then we'll add the 5 over. Um, in order to complete the square, we need a leading coefficient to be 1. So what we have to do is factor out the um, leading coefficients for the uh, x squared and y squared terms. So I'll have 4 times x squared plus 2x, and then I'm going to leave a blank because I know I'll be completing the square inside the parentheses, plus 3 times y squared minus 2y. I'll leave a blank there as well because I'm going to complete the square inside the parentheses. So for the x squared plus 2x here, I need to add b over 2 squared. So 2 over 2 squared. So I'm going to add 1. Um, but I'm adding 1 inside the parentheses where uh, there's a factor of 4. So really I added a 4. So I'll be adding a 4 to the other side of the equation as well. Um, I also need to add a 1 inside these parentheses to complete the square for y, but because there's a factor of 3 here, I actually added a 3, so I'll account for that on the other side. Remember that it's an equation, so whatever you have to do, you have to do on both sides of the equal sign. And now we can factor. So I have 4 times x plus 1 squared plus 3 times y minus 1 squared equals 5 plus 4 plus 3, that's 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is close. Um, in order to have it in the standard form of the ellipse, we do need to have 1 over here. Uh, the way that we can turn a 12 into a 1 is to divide by 12. So I'll divide by 12, but I need to divide everything by 12. That means we can reduce these fractions over here on the left. 4 twelfths is 1 third. So I have x plus 1 squared over 3. 3 twelfths is 1 fourth, so I have y minus 1 squared over 4 equals 1. So now I have the standard form of an ellipse. I can identify the center. So the center will be the point negative 1 comma 1. I can see the a and b values. Um, so this is larger 1, so this is a squared. a squared is equal to 4, so a is equal to 2. Here, b squared is equal to 3, so b is the square root of 3, which is about 1.7. And I'm making note of that 1.7 because that will help me to graph my ellipse more accurately uh, when I graph in the co-vertices. Um, so let's graph what we have. I will need to solve for c to find the foci. So the center is negative 1, 1. Um, because the larger number appears below the y uh, terms, this means this is a vertical ellipse. So the vertices will be above and below, and there'll be two units above and two units below. So now I have the vertices. Let's go ahead and write them down. So I have negative one, three, and I have negative one comma negative one. Okay, also the co-vertices are about 1.7 units to the left and right, so let's draw those in as well. Okay, lastly, we want to find the foci, so we need to solve for that c value. So we're using this equation again, um, b squared equals a squared minus c squared. So b squared was 3, a squared was 4. So this means that if I subtract 4, negative 1 is negative c squared, so 1 is c squared, so c is equal to 1. 
So the foci are one unit above and below the center. So now I can write out their coordinates as well. So here I have F1, F2. So the foci have uh, coordinates negative 1, 2 and negative 1, 0. And now we can draw in our ellipse. And there it is. Okay, let's look at an uh, application question involving an ellipse. The arch of a bridge is a semi-ellipse with a horizontal major axis. The span is 30 feet, and the top of the arch is 10 feet above the major axis. The roadway is horizontal and is 2 feet above the top of the arch. Find the vertical distance from the roadway to the arch at 5 foot intervals along the roadway. Okay, so we want to fit an equation to the semi-ellipse. A semi-ellipse is the top, well in this picture, the top half of the ellipse. So why don't we go ahead and just make the x-axis down here. So the vertices sit nicely there on the x-axis. And then maybe we'll put the, the y-axis right here in the center. This way the center of our ellipse is the origin. So the center is the point zero, zero. Um, because the span is 30 feet, I can also label these, um, let's get a different color. I can label these vertices here. So this would be the uh, point 15 comma zero. The other vertex would be negative 15 comma zero. This is already telling me my A value is 15. I have the center as well, zero, zero, just because of the way I decided to set up the ellipse. Um, it also says the arch is 10 feet above the major axis, so I can label this point, this covert text, as 0, 10. So I have the B value as well now. So if I have A and B in the center, this means I have enough information to write out the equation of the ellipse. So let's do that. So is going to be, oh, I don't really need parentheses, do I? Because H and K are both zero. So X squared over 15 squared, so 225, plus Y squared over 10 squared, 100, equals one. Okay, it says that the roadway is horizontal and is two feet above the arch. So just keep in mind that from the X axis to the actual roadway itself is 12. Oops. 12 feet because the roadway, oops, the roadway is two feet above um, here. It's two feet above the top of the arch. So it says find the vertical distance from the roadway to the arch at five foot intervals. So um, what we can do is use the equation of the ellipse to find y values. So let's say I find this y value. In order to find the distance from the roadway to that, I have to do 12 minus the y value to get this distance, right? So um, because we're really only finding y values and this is a semi-ellipse, let's go ahead and solve for y in the equation of the ellipse. It might be easier to use the um, equation if we do. So I'm going to solve for y here by subtracting the x fraction over to the other side. And then um, let's multiply by 100. Well, maybe before we do that, let's find a common denominator because this is kind of messy over here. Let's do a common denominator of 225. Okay, now let's multiply by 100. Um, we can probably reduce this a little bit, 100 over 225. Um, take out factor of 25 probably, maybe more, let's see, I take out 25, I get 4 ninths, yeah, that seems right. Okay, and let's go ahead and um, square root both sides. Normally I'd put plus or minus, but because it's the top half of an ellipse, it's the only the positive version. And then, of course, I know the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. 
that's just two thirds. So um, I'll simplify this. So I did this because now I can find y values more easily. It's kind of more like a function in this way. Um, so we're being asked to find the vertical distance from the roadway to the arch at five foot intervals along the roadway. So when we do this, we're going to have to um, subtract from 12. So we'll find this y value here and subtract it from 12 to get this vertical distance from the roadway to the arch itself. So at the center, which is x equals zero, according to our picture, we already know it's two feet, right? That was given in the problem. So now we'll go in five foot intervals. So at x equals five, we'll go ahead and plug it into our little equation to find the y value. We get, I put my calculator, about 9.4 feet. So 9.4 feet, just to show you in the picture, would be um, this distance. 9.4. That is not the distance we were asked to find. We were asked to find the kind of opposite of that, which would be above it, the road to the um, uh, top of, wait, find the vertical distance from the roadway to the arch. So we know that the total here is 12. So we'll do 12 minus 9.4 to get the actual um, distance. So five foot from the center, the road is 2.6 feet above the arch. Okay, and then we'll keep going. We're doing a five foot intervals. So now we'll plug this in as well. I put this in my calculator and I got about 7.5 feet. So once again, we'll subtract that from 12 to get the distance from the road to the arch. And that will be 4.5 feet. And if we keep going in five foot increments, we get 15, which we know is um, at the very, very